don't get hung up and get into arguments about where stuff is in the OSI model or where it is in the TCP IP model. Just be aware that if you're an application developer or you're a hacker, you can do all kinds of weird things and you can mix things around. You can take some layers and put them on top of other layers. We can create tunnels where we take Ethernet, IP, VXLAN, Ethernet, IP, and then other stuff on top of it and send that into the network. In previous videos, I've shown you how to use SCAPI to hack protocols such as BGP, how to, for instance, reset neighbor relationships, how to inject fake routes into BGP. I've shown you how to hack protocols such as EIGRP, which is a routing protocol. I've shown you how to circumvent VLANs and do other interesting things with SCAPI, but a lot of you have told me that you've struggled to understand the basics of SCAPI. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use SCAPI to generate packets, but not just standard packets, dodgy packets or weird packets if you like. I'm gonna also show you that what a lot of people believe about the OSI or TCP IP model is incorrect. People who are studying for their CCNA as an example are taught that we have the application layer and then we have the transport layer, then we have the network layer, and then we have data link, and then we have a physical layer. And then we taught how protocol data units are sent from say the application layer, then we get a header for the transport layer, TCP as an example, then we get an IP header, then we get a ethernet header, and then it's sent as bits on the wire. But in reality, you can actually mix your layers. The TCP IP model and the OSI model are just models. They don't always relate to reality. I have a YouTube video where I talk about the OSI model being a lie. I'll link that below, where I talk about some of the theory about how developers don't do what they're supposed to do, and not everything fits neatly into the OSI or TCP IP model. Model. But what I'm gonna show you here is how you can easily create your own malicious packets, if you like, or your own dodgy packets that you can send into the network using only a few commands. We're gonna use Python and Scapy to do this. In this example, I'm using Kali within a virtual machine on a Windows 11 laptop. I'm controlling that from my Mac. But basically you need to have a system that supports Scapy and Python. Kali makes this very, very easy because it's installed by default. So what I'm gonna do is open up a terminal. I'm gonna use sudo. I wanna use sudo privileges because I want to send packets into the network and I need sudo privileges to do that. I don't just wanna create the packets, I actually wanna send them into the network and show you what they look like. So I need sudo privileges. In this example, I am going to be using Python 3.9.10. Basically, you just need a version of Python that supports Scapy. Scapy is installed by default on Kali. So all I need to do in Python is type from scapy all import star. Now you could limit the modules that you import, but I'm just gonna keep this very, very simple and import everything. So import all of scapy. I'm gonna create a variable. I'll just call this layer two, and I'm going to make this equal to ethernet. This is the ethernet header. Just by doing that, I can show you what my ethernet packet looks like. Scapy generates some of this for me. So the destination is a broadcast, a bunch of Fs. Source is this, type is set to this. Now, what about layer three? So let's create a variable layer three and I'll set that to IP as in IP version four. And then I can say layer three dot show. And you can see the defaults used here are IP version four, source addresses this, destination addresses this you may want to change that. I could do something for IPv6. Don't forget about IPv6. So IPv6 equals IPv6. And then I can do a show once again to have a look at what that looks like. You can see that similar to IP version four, the IP version six addresses are loopback addresses. So all I've done now is I've imported Scapy into Python. I've created some variables and I made them to equal to various layers of the OSI or TCP IP model layer two. And then I've got layer three for IP version four. So again, if I have a look at layer two, that's the settings. Now you probably wanna change that. This MAC address is the MAC address of the Kali virtual machine. So if I type IP address in Kali and look at the ethernet zero MAC address, Notice 000C ends in 76. And there you go, that's the MAC address that was created. You may want to spoof your MAC address as an example. So let's set a layer two equal 
to Ethernet source 01 colon 0506. And I need to specify source equals. So that's my MAC address. If I have a look at layer two again, so layer two show, notice the MAC address has changed. I've just created a random MAC address. So rather than using the actual MAC address of the virtual machine, I'm spoofing my MAC address by simply doing that. Now let's change the layer three IP address. So I'm gonna set the layer three IP address to have a destination of 192.168.1.249. So now layer three dot show, you can see, and I need to use brackets. You can see that the source IP address is this, the destination IP address is that. The IP address of my Kali virtual machine is 192.168.159. So I could change that IP address if I wanted to, but for the moment, let's just leave the IP address as it is. So again, layer three show looks like that layer two show looks like that. That's okay, but we want to send traffic into the network. So I'm going to say send equals send P, and then I'm going to only for the moment send layer two. A lot of people are under the misconception that you have to send layer two, layer three, layer four, layer seven, if you like. You don't have to do that. I could just send layer two. Remember here, I could create my own malicious packets. I could create weird and wonderful packets. So I could send whatever I wanted to. Before I send that into the network, let's run Wireshark so we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna start capturing on my ethernet interface. I get a lot of traffic, but what I'm gonna do is filter for that MAC address. So at the moment, nothing is captured, but if I send that packet into the network, that's captured in Wireshark. You can see we told that it's a malformed packet. It's a broadcast from this MAC address. Ethernet 2 is the frame that was sent out. It's a broadcast with this source MAC address, 0102 up to 06. It says it's a loopback. Remember that when we looked at layer two, the type was this, so loopback. We told that this is a malformed packet, but we were able to send a layer two frame into the network. Now, rather than just sending layer two, I'm gonna use forward slash. That forward slash just allows me to put another layer on top of this layer. So I've got layer two, let's put layer three on top. So layer three, we'll send layer two, layer three, and in our Wireshark capture, we can see that that information is displayed. Source MAC address is this. Destination MAC address is a Cisco router in my local infrastructure. And if we have a look at the IP packet, you can see source IP address is 192.168.159. Destination is 249. What's great about Scapy is it doesn't force you to set all the options. It just fills in a bunch of options for you if you haven't filled them in already. At Ethernet 2, we didn't specify the type, but that's changed from the previous frame, which was loopback. Notice the type is 9000. Here, at layer two, the type at layer three is IP version four. Scapey filled that in for us. We didn't have to fill in those details. The only thing we changed was the source MAC address. Scapey changed the type field to reference the layer three protocol correctly. So we've got Ethernet two at layer two, and we've got IP version four at layer three. But now let's do some weird stuff. Let's break the OSI theory and send two layer three packets. So I'm sending layer two, layer three, and then layer three again. And if we have a look at that, you can see that's exactly what's sent into the network. We've got layer two, we've got IP version four, and then we've got IP version four again. I'm sending IP version four twice into the network. And that doesn't stop me doing other weird things like this. Let's put layer three three times. So we've got IP version four, IP version four, and IP version four. That's what happens in the real world. In the real world, we may be running multiple protocols. So we might have ethernet, and then we might have MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. Then we might have IP version four. Then we might have a GRE tunnel. Then we might have IPsec. And inside there, we may do other weird things. You can, as an example, put layer two on top of layer three. So let's do that. It won't necessarily like it, Wireshark won't like this, but notice I've got layer two, layer three, layer two. 
So if I look at that, I've got Ethernet 2 at layer 2, I've got IP version 4, and now it's not quite sure how to interpret this. It's seeing this as IP version 6, where I'm actually sending an Ethernet frame on top of IP version 4. This is why the theory of CCNA isn't always true in the real world, because if you're a developer, or in this case, using an application like Scapy, you could as a hacker send malicious packets into the network to do weird things. Let's have a look at layer four. So layer four, let's make our variable equal to TCP. So that, and let's have a look at what layer four looks like. So that's our variable. We've set it to TCP. Source port is port 20, which is FTP data. Destination port is port 80. Scapy has just selected port 20 here, but you could change that if you wanted to. But for the moment, I'll leave that as it is. Let's send a more realistic packet into the network. So we're gonna send layer two, layer three, and layer four. That's been sent into the network. And now you can see we've got ethernet two. Source MAC address is the MAC address that we were using previously. Destination MAC address is my Cisco router. Type field is IP version four. Now, if you're wondering, how does it know that MAC address? An op would have been sent into the network to discover that device. So we've got the destination MAC address, source MAC address. And if we look at the type field, that's IP version four. Protocol at layer three is IP version four. Once again, source and destination MAC address. And if we look at the protocol field, it's telling us that the protocol at layer four is TCP. And here we've got our TCP information. Source port, as mentioned, is 20. Destination port is 80. But now let me show you some more advanced stuff. Let's load something into Scapy. So some of the Scapy stuff that has to be brought in, and I'm breaking the rules here. Now, those of you who know Python know that this is bad practice. I'm using single inverted commas rather than double inverted commas here or quotation marks if you're from the States. That doesn't matter for our demonstration. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna import MPLS. And now I'm gonna say MPLS dot show. And I need double brackets there. We can see information about MPLS, like the label number, TTL and other settings. Now, if you're not sure what that is, MPLS or multi-protocol label switching is used in service provider networks, big companies, like AT&T or BT will often have an MPLS environment that allows them to more efficiently move traffic through the network, allows them to create what are called layer three VPNs and do other things more easily using MPLS than traditional protocols such as IP version four and access lists. We won't get into that. All I wanna show you is that I can stitch MPLS into our packet. Now, before I do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make something called my MPLS. So I'll create a variable and I'll set that to MPLS. And then what I'll do now is send layer two, send my MPLS, send layer three, send layer four. Okay, packet has been sent. And now notice we've got ethernet at layer two. We've got multi-protocol label switching. We can see bottom of stack equals one. So that's what the S is if you're not sure about that. We've got IP version four at layer three, or is that now layer four? This is where the OSI model gets a little bit interesting because is MPLS layer two, is it layer three? A lot of people will see it as layer two and a half. So we've got ethernet at layer two. We've got MPLS at layer two and a half. We've got IP at layer three, and we've got TCP at layer four. But as you can see, the lines are already getting blurred. Let's do some other crazy stuff. So let's do something like this, where we stack MPLS on top of layer three. So my MPLS and layer four now. So it's accepted that packets been sent to the network. Notice we've got ethernet, we've got MPLS, we've got IP version four, we've got MPLS, and now it's seeing that as ethernet. So it got a bit confused with the data that was sent into the network. Wireshark is not reading that properly. So why don't we do this then? Let's do this. We put layer two on top of MPLS, and then we put our layer three, and then we have layer four. So we'll send that into the network. And notice what we've done here. Now Wireshark is not reading this properly. It's seeing this as data now rather than ethernet. So it just says, okay, this is just data. Doesn't like that. So let's try layer three on top of MPLS rather than layer four. Okay, so we've got ethernet at layer two, 
MPLS at layer two and a half, IP at layer three, MPLS at what layer is that? Then we've got IP and then we've got TCP. Notice how we've stacked layers on top of other layers. Now this happens, as I've mentioned, all the time in the real world. Think about it, if you use a VPN, so you connect to some VPN provider somewhere, on the internet, the routers on the internet are gonna see the IP addresses from your device, as in like your home router, to the VPN service provider. So they're gonna see those IP addresses. Other information is gonna be encrypted, so your actual IP address will be encrypted. So what we've got is we've got IP on top of IP. So this kind of stuff happens all the time in the real world, don't get hung up with trying to put protocols into specific layers because the TCP IP model and the OSI model are models, but they don't always perfectly reflect reality because developers might create weird protocols that do weird things. As an example, voice protocols like VoIP protocols put stuff into the VoIP packets that would typically not be there, they would be at higher layers. Stuff gets mixed in by developers. Here, I've just shown you a simple example of how to forge weird packets. And I mean, you could do all kinds of things with Scapy. So as an example, rather than doing this kind of crazy stuff, let's just send layer two, layer three, and ICMP, so ICMP like that. So all I've done there is send a proper ethernet frame, a proper IP version four packet, and ICMP. But now here we get the question, at what layer does ICMP reside? Is it layer three? Is it layer four? Is it layer three and a half? Don't get hung up and get into arguments about where stuff is in the OSI model or where it is in the TCP IP model. Just be aware that if you're an application developer or you're a hacker, you can do all kinds of weird things and you can mix things around. You can take some layers and put them on top of other layers. As an example, in data centers, they use something called VXLAN rather than MPLS. We can create tunnels where we take Ethernet, IP, VXLAN, Ethernet, IP, and then other stuff on top of it and send that into the network. I'm hoping this gives you a good idea of how to get started with Scapy. If you're interested, let me know and I'll create more Scapy videos. Scapy is extremely powerful. I've created other videos where I show you how to hack BGP or protocols like Spanning Tree or do VLAN hoppings or circumvent VLANs and other protocols on a network. I'm David Bumble. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I wanna wish you all the very best. Avocate.